I'm Sam Vatnin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. Simon Bolivar, born in 1783 and died in 1830, is a Latin American folk hero, revered for having been a revolutionary freedom fighter, compassionate egalitarian, and a successful politician. He is credited with the liberation from Spanish colonial yoke of Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and Bolivia, a country named after him. Venezuela's new strongman, Hugo Chavez, renamed his country the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela to reflect the role of his Bolivarian Revolution. Yet while alive, Bolivar was a much-hated dictator and, at the beginning of his career, a military failure. His aide and friend, General Daniel O'Leary, an Irish soldier, described him so. It says O'Leary, Bolivar's chest was narrow, his figure slender, his legs particularly thin, his skin was swarthy and rather coarse, his hands and feet were small, a woman might have envied him. His expression, when he was in good humor, was pleasant, but it became terrible when he was aroused. The change was unbelievable. Bolivar explained his motives thus, I confess, this, the coronation of Napoleon in 1804, made me think of my unhappy country and the glory which he would win who should liberate it. So this was his motivation, glory. Later, after a victory against the Spaniards in 1819, Bolivar said, The triumphal arches, the flowers, the hymns, the acclamations, the wreaths offered and placed upon my head by the hands of lovely maidens, the fiestas, the thousand demonstrations of joy, are the least of the gifts that I have received. The greatest and dearest to my heart are the tears mingled with the rapture of happiness in which I have been bathed and the embraces with which the multitude have all but crushed me. Venezuela became independent in 1811, and Bolivar, being a minor though self-aggrandizing political figure, had little to do with it. After his first major military defeat in defending the coastal town of Puerto Cabello against royalist insurgents set out to oust the newly independent Venezuela, he advocated the creation of a professional army in the Cartagena Manifesto. Far from being a revolutionary, Bolivar justly opposed the reliance of guerrilleros and militiamen. Bolivar then conquered Caracas, Venezuela's capital, at the head of a small army, and declared himself a dictator. He made Congress award him the title of El Libertador, the Liberator. The seeds of his personality cult were sown. When he lost Caracas to the Royalists in yet another botched campaign, he retreated and captured Bogota, the capital city of Colombia, in, in December 1814. After a series of uninterrupted military defeats, Bolivar exiled himself to Jamaica. In a sudden, in a sudden conversion, he published the Jamaica Letter in 1815, in which he supported a model of government akin to the British parliamentary system, yet only following a phase of what he called guided leadership, identical to Hitler's Führerprinzip. But the self-anointed leader did not hesitate to desert his soldiers and to leave them stranded after yet another of his military exploits, an attempt to capture Caracas in 1816. He simply defected to, to Haiti, letting his royal troops fend for themselves as best they could. There followed a string of successful, even brilliant battles and coalitions with local warlords, politicians, which culminated in the liberation of Peru in 1824. At that time, Bolivar was declare, declared dictator, or to be precise, emperor of Peru and commander-in-chief of its army. Bolivar liked power and its trappings. In the constitution he composed in 1826, he suggested that the president of Bolivia, the name given to the entire region except Peru, should be appointed for life and should have the right to choose his successor. This president, presumably Bolivar himself, was described unabashedly by Bolivar as the sun which, fixed in its orbit, imparts life to the universe. Upon him rests our entire order, notwithstanding his lack of powers. A lifetime president with the power to choose his successor is the most sublime inspiration among republican regimes. In a letter to Santander, the Liberador expounded, 
I am convinced, to the very marrow of my bones, that our America can only be ruled through well-managed, uh, shrewd despotism. The National Geographic describes how William Tudor, the American consul at Lima, wrote in 1826 of the deep hypocrisy of Bolivar, who allowed himself to be deceived by the crawling, despicable flattery of those around him. Later, John Quincy Adams would define Bolivar, Boliv Bolivar's military career as despotic and sanguinary, and state, state boldly that he cannot disguise his hankering after a crown. That's Bolivar. In Bogota, the U.S. minister and future president, General William Henry Harrison, accused Bolivar of planning, planning to turn Gran Colombia into a monarchy under the mask of patriotism and attachment to liberty. Uh, Harrison said, Bolivar has really been preparing the means of investing himself with arbitrary power. When in 1828 a constitutional convention in Colombia rejected amendments to the constitution that Bolivar proposed, he assumed dictatorial powers in a coup d'etat. Now, Bolivar was the oppressor. Having uh, headed the coup d'etat, having become a dictator, he was regarded universally as a tyrant. He was murdered. He has murdered, sorry, or exiled his political rivals throughout his career. He confiscated church funds and imposed onerous taxes on the populace. Consequently, the Libertador, the Liberator, faced numerous uprisings and narrowly escaped an assassination attempt. By the time he died, Bolivar was so despised that the government of Venezuela refused to allow his body onto his soil. It took 12 years of constant petitioning by his family to let his remains be interred in the country that he ostensibly helped found.